Welcome to Casually Dressed Deep Conversation with me, your host Greg Chalmers, and with me as always, dressed like a sun lolly, unwrapped for its packet, <laughs> it's Christopher Shields, how you doing mate? I'm fucking happy to be here mate, just glad to be a part of things. Um, I'm alright, how I are did, you man? I, did, I can't really tell where your neck ends and that t-shirt begins. Yeah, I know, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm just no design for the heat mate, so <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those guys. Just I'm just look like old spam, rather than <laughs> slightly <laughs> older spam. <laughs> you know what, man? I'm happy with it. I'm comfortable with it. Right, I'm, glad, so mate, I'm glad. I'm Are glad. Are we recording already? Aye. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, this, is, this is what happens. <laughs> tonight's guests that have already piped up the uh, West Lothian band who described themselves as being. Genre fluid, not gender fluid. It's Dictator. How you doing, boys? We're all good, mate. How are you, man? We're good, mate. We're good. It's absolutely toasting in here. Yes. But I'm, I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling strong. What about you, Christopher? Come on. Do you want to comb your hair? I'm, I'm feeling all right. <laughs> hey, listen, if anybody's going to be talking about hair in this, for those people who are listening to this, Greg is looking like some sort of 80s bass player reject. <laughs> like, it's just, honestly, I think like, Pat Sharp phone, they want his hair do back. Yeah, I mean, Mate, tell like, I look like Simon Mate, Le Bon. Like, you know, you know what I'm thinking? It's like, you look like a badger. <laughs> I look like Tom Urie's beard. <laughs> you do, know, mate. It's just, it's, it's just stops. Right. You've gone too white, bro. You've nah, gone too but, white. But you can never go too white. Oh, I'm trying to go white, man. I'm trying, I've, I've got some more die next door. Why? Because, mate, I'm just, that's how I play the game these days. Anyway, mate, listen, don't let you know sad. I know, makes mate. Me sad. Right, anyway, fucking who yeah. cares, right? We're not here to talk about my hair, we'll talk to these gentlemen, right? Oh, yeah, true. So you can boys, talk about your hair if you want, mate. Eh? <laughs> well, I mean, suspiciously, you've both got hats on. Feel ready to hear So, lads, um, how has your, well, I think our podcast has been built on the one question how's your COVID experience, lockdown experience been? What's been going on? Uh, Joe, do you want to take the first one, mate? Is this just like about the band's COVID experience or my but, end? Whatever you want, mate. Better both, mate. Better <laughs> both. <laughs> uh, one's been great, one's been shite. I think the bad <laughs> one's been brilliant. <laughs> the, the band, I mean, it's, it's worked out all right for us. We've been, I mean, we just started just before COVID was a thing. Right. Don't know if that's a sign, maybe <laughs> someone telling us to stop. But nah, I mean, it's worked out all right. It's worked out all right. Uh, it's shown us this whole different side in the music world we've never really uh, done before and I'll be honest I didn't do much when it comes to social stuff but I mean I get, I get it now do you know what I mean I get it and it's it's really enjoyable and that but uh, I think Zach's probably best to cover how how we've been doing <laughs> the part he of the too, John. That's to you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, for, certainly from a band perspective, uh, COVID um, has been a. It's, it's not been all negative, mm-hmm. and I don't. I don't really like to focus on the negatives anyway. But you obviously don't know what hasn't it been, and, yeah. f- and frankly, our COVID experience as a band has been really quite positive because we've just can, went from strength to strength. It feels like. All right, we've not been able to gig, which has been a, a bit of a bummer, but everything else that we've sort of learned and and, and tackled because of that has, has benefited us and it's helped to grow us as a band and um, helped to push us along as well. So we're using bands beforehand? <laughs> nah, right. Both of us have been playing in bands since we were probably in our early teens. Eh? Really? Uh, Joe still 15, 16. Is this the first band that- you've been in together? Aye. 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 We jammed a few times before and there's plenty of times I would go into Zach's and uh, just to hear we jam on the stars. Aye. 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 Don't, don't <laughs> disclose anything else that went on around there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, we have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, played uh, guitars in the same room we got. <laughs> <laughs> In our previous iterations of bands as well, we'd, we'd shared like the same bill, so we were always gigging together in some sense. Right. And yeah. then the lead singer of Joe's older band ended up joining a band that I was in, and he's now the lead singer of Dictator, who's Michael. Yeah, uh, right. So it all just, it all just, it's one of those things that just kind of fell into place. So tell us the backstory. How did the whole thing come about? Um, so. Well, as I just says, you know, we were, we kind of knew each other from g- gigging on the same circuits. 
I think Michael joined a band that I was playing in called The Phantoms um, for for a short stint. Um, we all we had a great time. We kind of had a good chemistry. When I I decided to leave that band, I, I, at that point I was kind of disillusioned with music and the, how I felt the, the industry worked and I'd, I'd given up on music. But I kept in touch with people like Michael and all the band members and all of that. And uh, it got to a point where we were just chatting more, maybe thinking about creating music, but we wanted to... We, it was really important for us. We were just we were just bored, so we were like, we need to. If we're going to create music, if we're going to keep make, being in bands and stuff, we really need to to push ourselves creatively. Um, and that sort of weird dictator was born out of it. it. Was it was never really meant to be like a serious project. It was never an ambitious project. It was just to try and better ourselves to do something that was obviously fun first, first and foremost, uh, and to learn more and and really push our creative boundaries. That's interesting, it's, man. That really is. When you go, Chris, sorry. I know it's it's it's, it's you know what it, it kind of you've, you've kind of echoed. I think a lot of people have said whenever we've come on is is that kind of theme of just just go and do it just because you enjoy it. I mean, there's like a kind of authenticity, and because you've kind of just you're doing it authentically, just then people up people will buy into it. I mean, it's one of those totally. things that we have, like you said, we just kind of you come in here and we're, we're just. We're talking to each other exactly the same way we would talk to, to, us, to on the phone. You know what I mean? And it, yep. you, you kind of just hope that somebody that, that eventually people will kind of buy into it. We're still waiting for that to happen, mind you. But we're hoping, <laughs> we're hoping that the world, the world spreads. We're <laughs> niche. We're niche. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a firm believer, though, in, in uh, if, if you, what you're doing is authentic, then it will eventually resonate. Yeah. Like, since we started Dictator, there was absolutely no ambition. I, I, I don't want to say there's no ambition, but there wasn't really much in terms of we want to make it and however yeah. you want to deem making it is. But since we started uh, treating it like that, it's probably the most successful we've, we've ever been in any previous iterations of bands. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just because yeah. we were purely doing it for the love. And I, f- I think that people sort of recognise that. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I think uh, people can see when folk have uh, other intentions. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. So yeah. tell me, what is, uh, well, you said earlier on your genre fluid, but what would you say your influences were? Do you, do you want to give yours, mate? Uh, I, I mean, I, I like loads of stuff, to be honest. I mean, I love my 60s music. I love uh, uh, Betty Rock and Roll. love uh, hip-hop, love good good bass lines and just anything where I saw it a good uh, hook in it but I mean I is it uh, to be honest just anything man like uh, I'm, I'm really inspired by like seeing local bands and sort really? of bands that I know yeah. see when I hear like it doesn't matter what the song's like if I see someone I know going up on stage singing I don't just it's just it makes you feel like oh that's something I can do do you know what I mean mm-hmm. uh, that's something I can maybe do better <laughs> Well, see, in terms of in terms of the band, at least we we all came from like a very indie indie kid, indie rock and roll background. Yeah. So the Dictator core will always be that. We were all big fans of the Arctic Monkeys and the View, and that's what got us into music and picking up guitars. But when we created Dictator, it was like it was a conscious effort to involve all the different influences that, that we draw from. Yeah. So electronica and hip hop are like big ones where we're like, right, we want to be doing more than just playing guitars now. So we started like involving synths and samples and um, like electric drums and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Just just to try and um, just to try and bring everything that we can to the table. Hence the reason we say we're sort of genre fluids because all right, we're writing, we're still writing indie rock and roll bangers, but. <laughs> <laughs> Self-proclaimed. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. That's, that's going to be the tagline for us. <laughs> Still writing indie rock and roll bangers. But we're trying to bring in like influences from all over the joint, mate. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. Fusion. Uh, uh, a bit uh, of fusion. I like that. I like that. So tell us, what's your songwriting process then? Um, so Michael Campbell is our lead singer mm-hmm. and also lead songwriter. He tends for the most part to he'll write like the bones of a song or a structure at least and uh, he's 
he's really good at that, to be honest. So we just leave him to it. And then he, when he's when he's got something that he thinks is quite good, he'll maybe send us it in like a voice note or something like that. We will either reply to it if we think it's great or, or just ignore it if it's not that good. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and then if if it's something that we're like, right, that this is brilliant, we take it to the rehearsal room and everyone just adds a wee flavour to it. And I, that's pretty much how it goes. Then we no. take it we'll take it to our studio. Recently, we've been trying to work with more like producers to mm. try and um, to to branch out our sound a wee bit. People that are a bit more professional than us, just to try and uh, maybe I guess polished is the word. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's, a, it's another set of ears, isn't it? Just to be like, well, it's good, but if you just maybe there'll be, there'll, be, there'll be tweaks that they'll be able to see that you guys won't. Mm-hmm. Do you mean it's yeah? It's one of those. Uh, do you know you don't realise how much of a difference that makes? Um, one of we, uh, one of my sort of closest pals, um, is the guitar player in a band called Layaway, and uh, they. Used I know the, I know the boys, man. I know Yeah, so the see the see the, back, see, see the guitar player Rob. Mm-hmm. Big tall guy looks like uh, uh, Jack Skeleton with skin on him. Uh, uh, that's, that's my big mate. <laughs> uh, so I, but they just get the boy. Uh, they're just about to release a single just now, um, and uh, it's the producer of Father Son that produced it for them. Wow, that'd be really and cool. mate, you so need... real, mate, that's 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 a good connection. The two of those bands that'll be yeah. really cool, man. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> That like you should, the guy that produced it, man. They let me hear it, and I don't know what it is, but you see what you're saying, polished. It just sounds like something harms. Yeah, something harms. Yeah. It's just like somebody buffing the rust off a bit of metal. Do you know what I mean? Uh, um, I'm going to. It use makes that a big difference. Thing. I think you need. I think you need. <laughs> I think uh, having an outside perspective. Yeah. Somebody that's got. He doesn't have a. He's not interested in in, in uh, massaging your ego. Mm-hmm. It's really important because they can just tell you like this bit's pretty shite or this prep's really good you just need to get rid of that and you need more of that sort of thing yeah uh, we we've when since we've started doing that it's made we feel like it's made a big difference to our sound mm-hmm. so you've not had a chance to gig there yeah then have you no we did we 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 done joe how many gigs have we done what three four before so we released our first single in november 2019 right okay um, and then we managed to get a couple of gigs and we managed to get a headline in edinburgh sneaky pete's which was brilliant smashing and how was that we, that was incredible, mate. Aye. Was, How many folk does that hold? 100 capacity, but but aye, so we made a, a muck up of the tickets uh, and we thought we'd undersold, so we sold more. And it wow. turns, out, turns out we ended up overselling, so I think we had about 120, 130. <laughs> 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 was it didn't well, advise that, but it was class, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so was the atmosphere good and all that? Yeah. Have you ever been to Sneakies? No. Nah. No, nah, it's a really yeah. good venue, mate. It's a pretty yeah. legendary venue nowadays as well, yeah. man. Uh, but it's just like a really small, narrow room. That's all it is. is it does like the bars to the right hand side. But uh, because of just how intimate it is, it's, it's always. I've played there a few times, different bands. It's mm. always, always just a really good, a really good atmosphere and experience. Was it quite good getting to see all your hard work sort of coming together? Especially what you were saying that you're not doing it to make it. You were doing it to, uh, just for. for for your own expression to be able to see it being well received that must be pretty satisfying I definitely I mean I think the difference now going forward is is like we've both played amazing gigs you know what I mean we've both like in the past mm-hmm. and you can play in front of two or three hundred people one week and then in front of about four people the next week <laughs> <laughs> like, like honestly I mean I'm playing a gig and there was only one person in it, it was the last working behind the bar. <laughs> Started putting the bar stools in that up on the table. That was so fun. <laughs> but this was around about the same time. This, uh, genuinely, this was around about the same time. Maybe after we played the picture house in front of 800 people. Wow. Wow. It was mad. And then, so this, it's, there's hard work. And I think when we get to play gigs and we get to see the shows, um, if we are still selling out or we are still selling loads of, that's when I feel I'll see it paying off because you're only with numbers on the screen now with like followers yeah. and stuff like that and it, it's, it's cool and that like but I th- that's when I think you'll see the, the hard work pay off yeah. Yeah. so what sort of um, during Covid obviously it's difficult for uh, musicians across the board to try and make an impact and stay current and stay in people's faces what have you guys been up to to kind of keep that thing happening we've just been so we before covid hit we'd already hit the studio and we'd recorded five maybe six songs 
So we were actually in a good position to just keep pumping music out and just let people hear it, even though even though we weren't able to, normally you would like release a song and then do a gig to back that song up sort of stuff, but yeah. obviously we couldn't do that. So we've just been still releasing music and um, obviously we've, we've had a real focus on our social media because you've had to, uh, yeah. which has actually been an absolute blessing because before, before COVID, I hate even, I hate even saying COVID, man. <laughs> 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 I just hate talking about it. But, just, but before all that happened, we were a wee bit standoffish. Michael was pretty good on the Instagram because he's, it's yeah. just who he is, but the rest of us never really had much of an interest. I, I didn't even have a Twitter account. Like I had no interest in it whatsoever, but when we started the band, we obviously had to make all that stuff up. Yeah. Uh, so we had a strong focus then on our social media because it was the only way to interact with people. Yep. But it's turned into a blessing in disguise. Like, the amount of people that we've met just through our social medias uh, has been incredible. We've got more listeners, if you go into like, your Spotify for artists thing, we've got more listeners in, in London and Birmingham and Bristol than we do in Edinburgh. Yeah. Which that's... is mental. It's really, really, I, I know there's like a thing about population in that, but it's just mental that like, how are they hearing about us? How do they know anything about these wee guys for West Lovie and for Livy? Uh, that's amazing, and, man. And what's going on in Edinburgh? Why are they not listening to us? <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, honestly, we, we're exactly so, like we've had like like when you look at our kind of like, podcasting and you look at see where are your listeners are coming from. We've got like like at one point we had like we had some, we had this had contingent in Michigan oh, in America that just Michigan, are, like, Michigan are mad for us. <laughs> like, honestly, real like, big in Michigan. Uh, we've, had, like, we've had like you look at a listener, a listener in Guatemala, and you're going. How is, <laughs> how is he one? How has he got it? Two, there's no way he understood what we've said. I don't think it was the one. It was the one that we. There's you no way talking. this isn't English. <laughs> there was there was the, the one that was downloaded the most, and there was like Argentina and all that. But odd in South America, it was just all about Rangers and Celtic. So one when you and I are talking about it, you used to imagine some wee gringo in Guatemala going ah. Fuck the Rangers! <laughs> 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 yeah. it's crazy, and I'm a Rangers man. fan, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you? Oh, yeah, we wouldn't ever get to the podcast if we knew that. <laughs> are you not Levy fans, no? Nah, nah no. I mean, come on. We've seen them do well in that, but sell it. <laughs> we're all, we're all. We, we've done gigs with Phil Strips on in that, mate. It's... <laughs> Aye, because we are we are pals with uh, Big Alan Lithgow, the centre half, who plays oh, for Lithgow. Yeah, uh, he goes out with one of one of our friends for school, man. He's a nice big school friend. Uh, oh, that's it. Right. Yeah, good, oh, good team, good team. Tell you what, they've done well, man. Done really well. Brilliant. That's yeah, all, the, all, um, all the sort of closet Livy fans have come out of the woodwork this year, eh? You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> Spaghetti had to be the fault of the brim. But <laughs> 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 uh, so, um, I was kind of going through your Spotify and stuff like that, and uh, Anthem for a Doomed Youth, who wrote that? That was a cracker. Aye, so that, that's Michael as well. That, that was that's, that was really, really good. I really, and that's, so it's not even a sort of genre of music that I normally listen to, but I really like that song, man. And um, okay. it's got some of my plays. Yeah. But it's it's weird, that, that, that song was uh, that was just meant to be like an introduction to us. We never thought that that song was going to do. We didn't think it was going to do badly or anything, but we didn't really think it was going to do anywhere near as well as what it's done. Mm-hmm. There's it no was logic just kind of like it, stuff. No, you never know. You yeah. never do know. We've had songs. The song that we released after that, we thought was our best song, and it's probably our least popular. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what? It's, what it's is? Mad, what's it? the? What is it about? Like, is there a story behind it? So. Do you want to uh, answer that? I know about it. Uh, what's that about? It's a bit. Young folk. 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 You know, I'm, I don't like it. Is this what? It's a bit like. Is that a bit great? Humbug. No. <laughs> 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 You're definitely part of this band, right? But I'm mad short tonight. Why did you bounce on and pretend? 
<laughs> you know what? She is she's like, oh, no, no, no. The same way, I'm, I'm, as soon as I'm put on the spot. Uh, 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 she, oh, fuck it. Exactly. Right, so I do know what it's about, and it's actually, we're, we're all sitting here giggling, but it's quite a serious subject. <laughs> Right, okay, go. Um, it was, so Michael was inspired by, I think it was an article he read or something I seen in the news about knife crime statistics. And uh, just how, how he felt like the youth of today sort of are, they're given a bit of a hard time mm. uh, but, like, by the media. Mm-hmm. But they, it's like nobody, nobody seems to really recognise the fact that a lot of these people are born into that, that lifestyle. And it, it's, it's not really, like, they're, they're always... Um, they're always made out to be the bad guys, and, and I understand that they are the bad guys, but they're, um, you know, a lot of these people didn't have a chance. It is mm-hmm. basically, Joe, Joe did sum it up correctly, it is about the, the youth that, that, that are doomed in a sense, they've not got much of a chance, they've not got a fighting chance here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the, it's cultural, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I totally agree. And Joe, it's funny because when we had Aidan in the podcast, he kind of described the same thing. Uh, and it's actually just quite interesting how the both you guys and Aiden have both come at kind of the same subject but just in different ways and kind of address the same thing um, mm-hmm. and it's interesting I don't know are you, are you able to talk about what you've done with Aiden? Is it? Uh, nah. Yeah we can it's, it's now, I think Right so okay cool yeah. Batter in tell the good people at uh, home what have you been up to? Uh, well basically it, it, uh, for anyone in this who's, who's seen Aiden Martin's podcast or read his book he wrote a book called Euphoric Recall and the reason that we are connected with him was because when he was writing the book, he was also planning to release an, an audiobook version. He heard there were song taped up, funnily enough, the one that nobody else seems to like. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, felt, he thought it was quite an atmospheric song and it fitted the subject matter of what he was writing about. So he chose, or he asked us to, to use our music in the audiobook. And of course, he's a local guy doing brilliant positive things. So of course we said yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether it's just uh, we've just been lucky, but there just seems to be like a hub of like creativity coming out of West Lothian. Do you know what I mean? I just uh, we've I mean, we've spoken to loads of people, for, like even Paul Bogey. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, he was you, another guy we got off the back of. Um, me, this, guy, this guy's story is ridiculous. So basically, he was um, a heroin addict to like sixteen, and then just kicked the habit and joined the army at thirty. So just at the yeah. cut off point and then went from so being from a smack addict to guarding the Queen at Buckingham Palace. And then he fucking he was in well. a he was in a car accident and broke his spine and then get addicted to the pain meds. Uh, mate, wow. uh, mate, uh, but I like there's just a lot coming out of and it's all this it's all a very similar ilk. It's almost like people have had enough of the shite, Whoa. do you know what I mean? Uh, it's it's amazing here, man. Um it's weird because it felt like for years it was like culturally destitute. There was nothing here. There was nobody to look up to. There was there was very little yeah. going on. And then all of a sudden, there's just a big explosion. Of loads of people in all different art forms just doing really well and coming out. Coming, I think there is a very independent attitude, though. It's all do it for yourself. It's like yeah. everyone just needs to sort of pull them up, sit by their bootstraps, and go for it. Mm-hmm. But people are doing that, and it's amazing, man. And it's inspiring for, I think it's inspiring everyone across, across the board. Yeah, it's kind of self-perpetuating, I would imagine, do you know what I mean? Because everybody, uh, you know, you see somebody doing something, you think, I could do it. It's like what you were saying earlier on, Joe, about when you've seen a guy singing and going, wait a minute, give a microphone. Right, it's just, it's just, <laughs> no, I wouldn't <laughs> sing, I wouldn't <laughs> sing better than me. <laughs> but, um, it just, it, it's uh, it's just, I think it is self-perpetuating because people go, well, I think a lot of people don't express themselves because of fear, uh, they've got a fear of being chastised or mocked or whatever, and they, but then they uh, see somebody else doing it and they go, well, maybe I can do it, you know, and yeah. I think that maybe uh, encourages folk. Do you think that would have been so prevalent if lockdown hadn't happened and people were just stuck in the house? No. I don't, I think, think, people, I don't think so either. No. People, people have just used the time to actually chase maybe something that they're passionate about, haven't they? Uh, even we have in our sort of side projects, like, all right, we had the music, we, we doubled down on the music because there was nothing else to do, but then we started trying to, like, Joe's been trying to get into video editing and stuff like that. Other stuff is ultimately going to help the band, but all of that spare time is, is just giving people sort of that focus maybe they needed for the kid yeah. on the backside. Eh? Yeah, have you got any music video stuff? I didn't see any online. Yeah. I have you? I never saw yeah. it. What song is it? I'm going to check it out. What song is the music video for? <laughs> We just uploaded a live, uh, like a stripped back live version of the, the most recent release called Hide and Seek. Cool. Um, and before that, we released like a proper video production of uh, the song called Moonlight as well. Oh, wait a minute. Is that the one with ice skating? Aye. 
That yeah. was that was cool. I saw that on Spotify actually. That was cool. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought I recognised it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what um, what are the plans going forward? Because obviously live music's taking a serious dunt through all of the shit that's happened beforehand and stuff like that. So is it literally a case to just hit the ground running? George, do you know what we're up to? <laughs> Aye. Loads of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so many things. <laughs> oh, um, so many activities, man. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I just didn't know what I'm allowed to talk about. I know. Like, I, mate, see what you want. There's nothing. There's no secrets here. All right, well, I mean, <laughs> EP something. I'm really we're looking. We're about to record an EP something. I'm really looking forward to. Uh, can I say that we're releasing it? We are we independent label thing. Well, it's not finalised yet, but yeah, it's, it's looking like it's almost definitely going to happen, so, aye. Something like that. I mean, if it does happen, if that goes ahead, whatever, I mean, we'll still be doing it anyway, uh, but, uh, yeah. aye, it's, it's just something that we'll get a few new songs out of, and that, like, the song that we've recorded for it so far is probably our best, I think it'll get the best reaction so far, which gives me... Uh, faith for the rest of the EP and obviously looking forward to gigging again we, we've said that until we know that we can definitely do something like gigs can definitely go ahead that's when we'll wait to book so hopefully if all goes well we'll have a EP release soon and and that's what I believe is going on yeah. and there's other stuff as well <laughs> ah, there's, there's <laughs> I'll tell you ah, <laughs> yeah, we've got at least Three more releases at least for to, to take us to the end of this year, mm-hmm. um, and then the EP will probably be coming out early next year. Uh, it just depends how quickly we get it recorded. We're going into the studio as Joe says in the next few weeks, uh, next next weekend I think. We're recording with Seven West Studios in Glasgow. I don't know if you've heard of them. Is that like, is Arab Strap recorded there? I don't I don't know, mate. I couldn't tell. I know that it's it's sort of weird. It's where Jerry Cinnamon has came out. Of. Yeah, yeah. Um, and bands like the the Dunce and there's loads of there's loads and loads of really exciting music coming out of there just now. And to touch on the subject earlier about working with producers, those guys were just uh, have been amazing with us so far. So we can't wait to go in and record the, the next couple of songs for this EP. That would um, that be class. Aye, aye, that's amazing, mate. It's, it's in. So they're the label, but they're recording in Mogwai Studio. So it's Mogwai. Mentioned, That's a name that. you've not heard for a while, isn't it? That's metal, man. It's metal. Well, they got a number one album like at the beginning of the year or something, which is I only listen to it. I only listen to eat old emo music for like the early noughties. So, but it's it's wicked in there, mate. Studio minted, so it's it's an amazing experience for us just to even see how all of that's done. Uh, when the EP comes out, I will will hopefully have. I, I, I'd, I'd like to hope a UK tour, but. We just have to play that by ear. If everything's opened up by then, then I will be all will be all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, obviously, <laughs> gigs do seem to be happening right now. It's socially distanced. A lot of acoustic shows. Scotland's a wee bit different for England. We've just, uh, Joe, I, I've not actually told you, but we just confirmed a show in the north of England at the end of this month. So we will be doing. We are gigging soon, really soon, which I can't wait today. However. We're almost definitely going to be absolutely shy. <laughs> <laughs> what? A, that's just a quintessentially Scottish attitude, isn't it? <laughs> we've no, we've no gigged in like well over a year and a half, probably. So uh, it's it's a wee warm up show for us, but it's going to be amazing to be playing in front of a crowd and playing all four years. It's going to be class, man. So I don't care if we sound shy as long as I'm having fun. That's that's the right that's attitude, man. That's the right attitude. Do you know? What? I think a UK tour would be class. I've uh, we when when Rob and that were on um, from Layaway, they were it just sounds like amazing fun, man. They went away in this like old van that they st- stuffed all their equipment in, and they said they didn't have enough money to, like stay places, so they just like would turn the ramps and that on their side, and then they got that spongy stuff that you put under astroturf, and they just yeah. laid that out in the whole van, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing, but I love all that stuff, man. Uh, yeah, it's fun. That is fun, man. Yeah. Have you been I've out on tour before days. with another band? Uh, the, the last gig we played before lockdown was in Newcastle with, uh, I, I don't know if you've heard, the Mark Sharp and the Bicycle Thieves. 
If you haven't heard of them, check them out and definitely get them on your podcast. They're an amazing music and amazing guys. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but they took us down, they invited us down to Newcastle and it's like, Joe's never even played outside the Central Belt, I don't think, before that. So it was a huge experience for us, man. It was incredible. In fact, it was two days before the lockdown. It was an I got locked in weekend Monday and that gig was on a Saturday. Cool thing about that, Sharp, Mark Sharp and the Bicycle Thieves were actually supporting Lewis Capaldi the following night on a Sunday, which was like the last gig of the entire the entire uh, like circuit before lockdown. Wow. And he had guest lists, so he was like, Do you want to come? But he didn't ask us until this like late the Saturday night. <laughs> and we were like, Right, right, we're in Newcastle, <laughs> we're in Newcastle, the gig's in Aberdeen, and we're all working on Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Of course we went, mate. Of course we went. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you not? Yeah, absolutely. That'd have been class, man. So, what yeah, was the atmosphere was... like at that gig in Newcastle you did then? Was it class? Yeah, it was Hi. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we were on the second day. We were on just four. Yeah. And it was busy enough, but again, this was playing, us playing in front of pretty much a brand new audience. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I think everything went down well in that and uh, I just I feel the next time we go down when we've actually got you know, people have heard us now, yeah, I, yeah. A little better. Mm-hmm. but no it was class like it was really good have you I been suppose, have you, that's, 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 oh, sorry. on you go Chris mate on you go I was going to say I suppose it must be if you if you've not yeah, this is where you'll, you'll see the benefit of your kind of social media campaign and the fact that you're actually getting yourselves in front of people from other places whereas before you like you say, you've got that kind of battle when you when you first go on stage, you have to try and win the crowd over first. You know what I mean, because we've all everyone's been there, and if we, there's a this band turns up, you're like, who are these clowns? <laughs> yeah, you, automatic. You've never even heard them. You're just like, look at the state, <laughs> look at the state of that guy, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh no, actually, I quite like this. This is all right. And then yeah. before you know it, you're jumping about like daft at the end of the set. So it must be, but obviously, like you say, you because we've been, you've been. In, done the social media thing and you've kind of generated a bit of a, a following like uh, it should kind of alleviate that slightly it's, it's always good. nice to have some of the to the crowd on your side but see the challenge of winning over those guys that didn't they are just like oh, these guys yeah you know i mean they're bright they distractions who do they think they are man <laughs> <laughs> do you just go on stage and bright they distractions <laughs> sometimes <laughs> i sometimes <laughs> uh, aye, but part the, the challenge of winning them over is a lot of fun for us, man. It's it's great. You, you can you can see them turning. You can see yeah. them like getting you dirty looks and that sitting at the bar table, writing at the front like, aye, man, love these guys. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, you know you're talking about the social media thing? What did bands do beforehand? Do you think the social media thing just accelerates the whole thing? Like you could go, you could be an overnight success. I mean, look, that guy who did the sea shanty thing—it was like bang. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But think about what did people do beforehand? It must have been. I think it democrat- democratized it. Is that the word? Uh, certainly, even yeah. the playing fields. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, it's yeah. just uh, it's. I mean, you look at acts like sort of Chance the Rapper and stuff like that that went and basically did the whole thing on on, on himself without any backing and all that. Do you know what I mean? Huge influence here, years by the way. Really. <laughs> His music and his his business model and how him and a uh, pack oh, pack yeah. manager mm-hmm. have uh, built themselves up. We we love we we were always like referencing that when whenever we were going forward. Yeah, it, although it's... they've split ways now, so it's maybe not the best business model. But... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they made enough money, lads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, See, the I thing just... is, do you know find though? Right, uh, obviously, like you say, because social media is, it kind of it allows everybody a pl- It's a bit like podcasts in that respect, that, like. Anybody can do it, but not everyone should do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's one of those that you kind of you have to kind of fight your way through because it allows everyone to do these things. You have to kind of you have, it, has, it forces your levels up. So you have, you need to actually kind of distinguish yourself from the crowd because there are that many people doing it. I think the internet's like that in general, though. The internet yeah. is just giving people the opportunity or a platform to have an opinion when they really should keep their mouth shut. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, as soon as you just read through, you're just like, oh, shut up. Don't fuck <laughs> a week, crawl back under your stone, you tadger. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> he won't. He's too no, lazy. No, he won't. No, 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 no. So, with you saying about you your initial... Uh, 
the sort of initial spark to, to start Dictator and stuff like that wasn't monetary or anything like that, it was just doing it for the love of the music. Best case scenario, where would you love the whole thing to go? Or, best case scenario, what gig would you like to play? you want to go first, Joe? I mean, best case scenario is you just make enough to get by, really, and focus all your time on it. <clears throat> and that's the way I look at it. It just seems to be like if there's something I can do as a living, then you're laughing, to be honest. But, I mean, best case scenario is you get a good Christmas number one or something and then retire at 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this a song that's in the pipeline or no? <laughs> this is a soul. <laughs> <That's a soul. laughs> Joe does all I want for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, but for gigs, it, it's. I would say I would love to go to America to play. Yeah, right. It's hard, I, I couldn't say where, I've never been to America and, and I don't know any of the venues. Like, but, <laughs> I would, I would just love to go <laughs> just get a wee tour of California and that, that just, get, just get a tar in there <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you Zach what's your aspirations going forward I, uh, see for me obviously I, I'm not interested in making loads of money or anything like that I'd like to make enough money to, to make uh, creating music and supporting music I'm eleven. I'm not interested in you know that I'm not interested. See if a big massive gig comes on in America or something like that, it'd be class. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just love the idea of this guy. Record label going, Oh well that was going off for them. Maybe they don't want it. Fine. <laughs> I just, oh, well, just want to them off the list. <laughs> I just want to wake up in the morning and be like, right, I'm gonna write a song <clears throat> or we're we're meeting up because we're making a video or like like me, I'd love to start a label and and help other bands. So I'd like to get us to a certain level that we then have gained enough knowledge and maybe some financial backing to then start building up other bands and helping them sort of get to a certain point. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love seeing, like like Joe said earlier, he takes a lot of inspiration for the local scene. And it's just because we love seeing people do well. And yeah. you know what I mean? I, I sometimes get more satisfaction seeing somebody else doing really well than, than I yeah. probably should we us to get like doing really well. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's my aspirations, but I just want to, I want to quit the normal 95 and make music 95 and it doesn't even need to be... I, I'm like the de facto manager for Dictator. So I spend loads of my time just sending emails and like replying to DMs. I love that, man. I absolutely <laughs> love that. Like, I, I, as long as I'm caught building towards the dream, it's cool. Mm, it's yeah. that's fine. Do you know what I mean? I don't mind doing that whatsoever. It's like a shared vision thing, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And if you're pushing it forward, you're not stagnating. I think the worst thing in the world is stagnating. See if you're just no going anywhere. I think that's actually worse than going back. Um, mm. And uh, I have... I, I think uh, cause, well, actually what I was going to say there, I was seeing you were talking about uh, the kind of but starting up a, a label and helping out younger bands I think you guys have been through the trenches by the sounds of it do you know what I mean since you are very very young you know where the pitfalls are and stuff like that and I think starting up something that could kind of guide bands especially now because the we, like we alluded to earlier on with the whole social media thing the, the landscape's changed you don't send demo tapes out anymore. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? You're, uh, and when bands are being assessed for bigger labels and stuff like that, it's not just all how good's the music. It's like, well, what's their social media following like? And all that kind of stuff. And that was never taken into consideration before. So I think a wee bit of guidance on that front might is, is definitely going to be a good thing for any up-and-comers, you know? Oh, I definitely learned that it was definitely trial by fire, man. Just <laughs> we only know what we do now because we made so many mistakes in the past. That's all it is. Have you ever had any right shocking gigs with other bands? <laughs> right, go. You must have a couple of tales to regale as we. Uh, I mean, most of them are are just like similar to Joe's story, where you turn up and there's no a single person in the crowd, <laughs> and you're just playing to the bar staff. Oh. Um, but I tell you what, sometimes they're fun. Sometimes because you can treat it just like a rehearsal and you have part with each other and that. Sometimes you have part of the bar staff as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have, I'll tell you one, a few years ago, I was playing a gig, it was a charity gig in Dundee, but I'll not name the band because I don't want to be that guy, but a fairly famous 90, 90s band and I was looking forward to seeing them. And uh, But it turns out it was like, uh, like, a, like a right wing sort of Britain first type guy, man. And he came onto the stage, right? And to be, it was not like he was spouting any of that, but it's because we'd found that out anyway, and we're like, oh, fuck this guy then. <laughs> and then uh, 
And then he came on stage and obviously I think everyone, the word had got around the whole crowd by this point. It was quite busy. Everyone sitting there looking at the stage and just nobody was like participating. Nobody really wanted anything to do with it. And the guy ended up having a pure hissy fit and just storming off the stage. Really? Aye. <laughs> aye, aye. That was probably one of the only horror stories that I've... I, I say horror story. I'm kind of glad he fucked off, but... I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what, what? So, lads, before we finish up for the evening, um, can you give the people at home, where can they hear your music, what's your social media information, and uh, where can they see you in the, get the upcoming months? I'll leave that to you, Joe. I, I never had a question there. That totally <laughs> uh, pinged. Right, like, pause. I just have... <laughs> right, Zach, you take it. <laughs> Aye, so we're obviously on all your social media platforms. Uh, Twitter, <clears throat> I'm just trying to get the handle up. My Twitter's at dictator underscore band. Um, I think Instagram's the same. Instagram is dictator band. Spot, uh, Facebook will be th the same thing. Uh, we're obviously on Spotify, obviously on YouTube. So go and subscribe to us, follow us, and all of that stuff. Give us a listen. If you do like us, feel free to DM us or tweet at us or whatever you want to do. We love talking to everyone, we love chatting. So if you like your music, feel free to approach us. Fantastic gentlemen, fantastic. Hey, well, I'll sign off here lads, but thank you very, very much for coming on and talking to us. Um, thank you for having us, man. Not a problem at all, not a problem at all. So, Chris, um, I'll catch you at some point in the near future. Um, but thank you for listening, folks. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons.